now what is uh, quantum and the planck's constant so planck constant is just a constant like um, in the equation e equal to h v or h mu where e is the energy and v is the velocity of the particle uh, and that velocity is generally the velocity of the light so between that um, e equal to planck's constant into the velocity of the light so that constant is called the planck's constant and now there is an important uh, thing important uh, paradox that is the scrondier cat remember a while ago when we say that uh, there was a problem with copenhagen interpretation well you know you now know enough of what quantum physics is to be able to discuss what it isn't and by far the biggest thing it isn't complete sure the math seems to be complete but the theory includes absolutely nothing that would tie the math to any physical reality we could imagine furthermore quantum physics leaves us with a rather large open question what is reality the copenhagen interpretation attempts to solve this problem by saying that reality is what is measured however the measuring device itself is not real until it is measured the problem which is known as the measurement problem is when does the cycle stops remember that when we last discussed scrondiers scrondinger he was muttering about the damned quantum jumping he never did get used to quantum physics but unlike einstein he was able to come up with a very real demonstration of just how incomplete the physical view of our world given by quantum physics really is imagine a box in which there is a radioactive source a jitter counter or anything that records the presence of radioactive particles a bottle of cyanide and a cat the detector is turned on for just long enough that there is a 50/50 chance that the radioactive material will decay if the material does decay the jitter counter detects the particle and crushes the bottle of cyanide killing the cat if the material does not decay the cat lives to us outside the box the time of detection is when the box is open at that point the wave function collapses and the cat either dies or leaves however until the box is open the cat is both dead and alive on the other hand the cat itself could be considered the detector its presence is enough to collapse the wave function but in that case would the presence of a rat be enough where is the line drawn on the other hand what if you replace the cat with a human named 
Wigner's friend after Eugen Wigner, the physicist who developed many derivations of Schrödinger's cat's experiment. The human is certainly able to collapse the wave function, yet to us outside the box, the measurement is not taken. until the box is open. If we try to develop some sort of quantum relativity where each individual has its own view of the world, then what is it to prevent the world from getting out of sync between observers? While there are many different interpretations that solve the problems of Schrödinger's cat, one of which we will discuss shortly, none of them are satisfactorily enough to have convinced a majority of physicists that the consensus of these interpretations are better than the half-dead cat. Furthermore, while these interpretations do prevent a half-dead cat, they do not solve the underlying measurement problem. Until a better interpretation surfaces, we are left with Copenhagen's interpretation and its half-dead cat. We can certainly understand how Skrondinger feels when he says, I don't like it. And I am sorry, I have, I ever had anything to do with it. Yet the problem doesn't go away. It is just left for the great thinkers of tomorrow. Now the infinity problem. There is one last problem that we will discuss before moving on to the alternative interpretation. Unlike the others, this problem lies primarily in the mathematics of a certain part of quantum physics called the quantum electrodynamics or QED. This branch of quantum physics explains the electromagnetic interactions in quantum terms. The problem is when you add the interaction particles and try to solve Schrodinger's wave equation, you get an electrons with infinite mass infinite energy and infinite charge. There is no way to get rid of that infinites using valid mathematics. So the theorists simply divide infinity by infinity and get whatever results the guys in the lab say the mass, energy and charge should be. Even fuzzing the math, the other results of QED are so powerful that the most physicists ignore the infinities and use the theory anyway. As Paul Dirac, who was one of the physicists who published quantum equations before Schrodinger's, said sensible mathematics involves neglecting a quantity when it turns out to be small, not neglecting it just because it is infinitely great and you do not want it. Now the other interpretation is the many world interpretation presented first by Huck Everett in 1957.
is the many world in this theory whenever a measurement takes place the entire universe divides as many times as there are possible outcomes of the measurement all universes are identical except for the outcome of that measurement unlike the science fiction view of parallel universes it is possible for any of these worlds to interact with each other while this creates an unthinkable number of different worlds it does solve the problems of scrondinger's cat instead of one cat we now have two one is dead and the other alive however it is still not solved the measurement problem if the universe is split every time there was more than one possibility then we would not see the interference pattern in the electron experiment this question in a satisfactory way and so the search continues